Digital outputs in a PLC system act as an interface between our PLC controller and the final elements of our system. The final elements are the outputs that act on our system to provide a change such as valves, heaters, motors and many others. In this video we will talk about how digital output cards are used to drive system outputs and the likely wiring configurations you will come across. PLCs make changes to the system in response to input changes via the output cards. Depending on the type of final element and the interface type will dictate what type of hardware we need. For devices that have a two-state operating mode, then a digital output will facilitate this. Some of the common uses for digital outputs are pneumatic and hydraulic solenoids. These solenoids are energized or de-energized by the digital outputs and in turn allow compressed air or hydraulics to flow through pipework that then goes on to move cylinders in all types of applications from rams and lifts to process isolation valves. The shutdown of equipment. Digital outputs can work to trip equipment in a safety system, either through shunt trips or contacts that are held healthy by the digital output. With these two options, nearly any electrical system can be shut down or change state with a digital output. Digital outputs can also act as inputs for separate systems. This could be package logic or separate PLC infrastructure. A typical use case for this configuration is an intertrip where a shutdown output from one PLC becomes a shutdown input in another. This is usual in larger distributed systems where separate PLCs look after individual sections of plant. There are a few different types of digital outputs, but the main ones you'll find are powered outputs and relay contacts. With relay contacts, when the PLC processor gives a signal to change the state of the digital output, the output card closes a relay-like contact that gives a conductive path to another circuit. We would call this a dry contact where no voltage is produced by the contact and instead will be powered by the separate circuit. Powered outputs work by giving a voltage output when the PLC processor tells the output to be on. Usually 24 volts is given from the output. In this format, equipment might be powered directly from the output card but separate relays are often used as an intermediary. Let's look at the typical wiring configuration of digital outputs for a solenoid. Here we have a simple schematic of a solenoid field device that is connected to the PLC system via a digital output. In this configuration, we have a powered output. Firstly, we have the output card powered by our 0 volts and 24 volts. We can then see the solenoid powered directly from the output one of the PLC via the one pair cable. The nut volts is then terminated back in the PLC enclosure. This is a simple configuration, although a limiting factor can be the amount of current that the output device requires. The required current may be higher than the amount the digital output can give, and thus would lead to a blown fuse or damaged equipment. One way around this is to use an interposing relay. This is just the name of a standard relay that is used to separate two systems. You can see our powered output is now powering Relay 1's coil via A1 and A2 terminals. When energized, it closes the common and normally open contacts and allows the solenoid to be powered directly from our power source. This is useful if field devices require different voltages from our PLC. In our next card configuration, we have a relay contact card. Instead of providing power straight from the channel output, when activated, this channel will close the contacts and allow us to use this contact to supply another component. In this case, our field solenoid via the 24 volt supply. Hopefully, this has covered all the basics of PLC output cards and the common configurations you will find. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider liking and subscribing for the next instalments.